Why was the obsession with streaming so stupid? If you want a little background, go click this comment and watch my other TikTok on how Lou Wasserman revolutionized the film business. But essentially what Wasserman did was he created release windows, right? So you make a movie, you have the theatrical window, you have the television window, and you had the HBO window, and you had pay cable, then you had the network premiere, you know? And then this was all across the world. So you have all these different windows that allow you to maximize the value of the one movie that you've made. I think the obsession with streaming from the last few years can best be understood as the reversal of all of that. The reversal of uh, exploiting the value of a property through multiple licenses in different windows. Now, why they wanted to do that, I don't know. It doesn't make it any better for consumers. It really doesn't. What it's resulted in is an environment where nobody can decide what they want to watch so they just don't watch or they just watch the same thing over and over again like the office or whatever these companies of course uh, felt that their stock price was very closely tied to the health of their streaming service right so they didn't have a streaming service they created one and then they try to consolidate as much value there as possible pulling their shows off other services allowing you know for instance dc uh, properties to exist only on the warner brothers discovery streaming service uh, which is hbo max and nowhere else uh, and they consolidated everything down to streaming, destroying all these release windows, destroying this healthy ecosystem that has developed over the course of the last, whatever, 70 or 80 years. Streaming was just this like pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and everybody thought, oh, if we invest in our streaming service, then uh, it's just gonna produce all this money. Well, of course uh, it hasn't done that for many reasons, okay? So now we are seeing a return to windowed licensing uh, you know, Warner Brothers Discovery, for instance, which owns uh, DC uh, Comics, is licensing DC to Tubi uh, and to Netflix. And they are cross-licensing not just their properties, but their best properties to their direct competitors, right? That would not have happened a year ago. So this is an about face in how they are approaching the exploitation of their of their uh, IP. Now, on the one hand, I wanna commend them because when you realize you're doing something wrong, you need to reverse course immediately. And that's what these companies have done. And now they're all cross licensing. They're bringing in new cash flow. They're realizing that the, you know, the, the behind the scenes structure of uh, the cable ecosystem had a lot of value and now they're essentially recreating it in the streaming world. But on the other hand, this, is incredibly predictable. Why would you give up a, a, a valuable window when you can just make the most of it and get paid? Why? Why would you want to destroy that? These companies were very anti-advertising and they wouldn't offer a cheaper advertising tier. Guess what? They've reversed course because that was a great innovation that brought a lot of value to consumers and also to these companies. There are you know, many people who are happy to watch advertising if it means they're paying half the price. Over the next few years, I think we're gonna see a lot of rediscovering about what was great about the cable ecosystem, and we're gonna see those techniques applied in the streaming area. And I do think it is going to be good for consumers, which in turn means it will be good for the health of these companies and the overall health of the film industry. But we need continued innovation. You can't just copy somebody else's business model. You can't just merge and acquire. You have to have new ideas in business. Those are the type of leaders we need, not just people who are just merging and acquiring, right? That has its place. m and is good. m and is an important part of uh, you know, the investment ecosystem but we need creative ideas in business that create new revenue streams that don't exist. We need an emphasis on this. There isn't even a discussion about it. And the truth is, look at the music industry as an example. If you don't innovate, if you prop up an old business model, and if you don't continue to innovate, then change will be forced on you. It'll be forced on you, usually by technology, right? Uh, the streaming innovation itself has essentially been forced on the mainstream film industry by the tech industry. Netflix is a tech company.
but we need creativity in business. We need the uh, executives. We need people focusing on new things, new services, new value that they can provide consumers. The people that own the exhibitors need to be focusing on what is the new value uh, or, or the rediscovered value of going to a movie theater. These are the things we need to be focusing on as an industry. It's not all about just focusing on whatever new technological innovation it is. Uh, there are other innovations in different ways uh, that that need to come to the forefront and, and become a central part of these businesses. It's all about providing value. And when you're providing value, people don't question it. They pay for it. And then your stock price goes up.